I've tried to reassign the importance of precipitation to the whole scheme. And when I do this and I look at the wettest years, which are 1902 or so, and assign roughly equal value to the precipitation Calgary receives in a year and its average yearly temperature, I find that averaging these two things together to make an overall picture of how much energy Calgary is receiving in all of its different ways shows that there is no overall trend because there are years which had lower overall temperature but they had much higher precipitation. So the energy coming into the earth is just being used for something different. There's not a net increase necessarily in the energy supply. It's just being used for moving water around rather than heating. And when you account for two elements, a third one would be cloudiness, which I haven't taken account of, then the apparent trend of getting warmer and warmer vanishes, really. The most energetic year becomes 1902 rather than 1987. This is something that should be kept in mind, I think, in looking at how warm the Earth is, that we're looking only at the temperature and measuring a few temperatures from the ocean. Most of the data is coming from land. On land, we do have data for precipitation, but how much data do we have for precipitation over the ocean? We can create the impression of a warming planet by looking at just drier years over land. When it was drier over the land, it was probably raining more over the ocean, and we just don't have the data to show how that all evened out. But there are cycles of wetting and drying, certainly, which give the impression that things are going in more extreme swings from hot to cold because they're not taking all of the energy budget into account.